Okay, so if you're thinking about how to use public data on websites to personalize outreach or do some kind of research, well, you're in the right place. Now, traditionally, scraping websites has been very cumbersome, but now, thanks to loads of the latest tools, it's become a lot easier and we can just focus on doing what we want to do with that data that we extract. Now, let me get into today's video and I'm going to show you exactly how I'm doing that. All right, amazing. So by the end of this video, you're going to have a very, very simple template that you can use to extract information from any website Get it in a structured format, which you can then use and process into, say, an outreach message, for example. In, use, in this use case that I'm going to show you, we're going to be scraping from our e-commerce website, boohoo.com, to actually get their trending products, which we can then use to say, hey, your best performing product is X, or on average, your AOV is X. You know, you could do so much with this, which is going to be really, really valuable. So, as I always do, let me explain why we are doing this while we're talking about this. Traditionally, scraping websites has been a bit of a pain, right? You might have to scrape the site with a HTTP call, then extract the text. You've got to worry about proxies as well, and then pass that into an LLM to actually get the structured data. And how we would do that on like an NADN, for example, I would come here and just make a HTTP request, make a GET request, and I'd make it to boohoo.com. And then as you can see, I'm going to get the, the data just about, but there's so much text, so much html tags and if you pass this directly into a model it just will be far less performant than if you passed in the text so what you would need to do is you then you need to then take this and pass that into like a text extractor node which would like remove all the html and h2 tags and everything so you just get the plain text and although that's very very possible it's not too difficult it's like we don't need to do that anymore why because there's an amazing tool that we can now use after i move myself over here Firecall. So Firecall does what it says. It turns any website into LLM ready data. By LLM ready data, what they really mean is large language models. They like to work with Markdown. Markdown, which is just text, very, very simple text. That's the best information way to give them information because they're better to, they're, it's more easy for them to process Markdown information, right? So how does that work? I'll come over here to um, Firecall and you see they've got a, play, they've got a playground feature. You can literally come here, pass in the URL, and then hit run. If I move myself again. Goodness me. I'm having a nightmare today. I'll hit run. It'll take some time. And now, as you can see, in the markdown format, we have all of the, the actual text from the website. So... We have the links as well, so you can use those links to like crawl the website in the future. And there's this is me for shadow in here, but also you've got all of the text. You know, ten dollars and under. LLMs are much more better at processing this information than they are with just HTML tags. So this is valuable. But as I mentioned before, this is amazing. But what you would then have to do is you would then take this, but you still need to pass it into an LLM. If I go back to my Scally draw, if it lets me. You still need to take this fire call data, pass it into an LLM to get structured data, right? And then use that structured data to then do what we want to do, which is great. But there's even an easier thing we can use now, thanks to fire call. Now, if I come back, fire call has an option here called extract. This is an amazing, amazing thing to use. All you need to do is with natural language, you tell fire call what you're trying to do, and it will quite literally create like a structured schema they will then go to the website to try to fetch data with that structured schema and then pass it back to you. It's better if I just show you. So if I come back to my thing here, I'll just come here and say boohoo.com. And I'll come over here. I'll copy this. So what I'm doing is extract some of the, I'm telling the extract um, sort of function to extract some of the trending products, including their name, price, and product URL from boohoo.com. And when I hit generate parameters, it's going to use AI to literally create the schema that I then need to do what I need to do. So amazing. So as you can see, it's giving me this really, really cool schema called trending products with, and it's going to be an array of products with the name, the price, and the product URL. Right. So if I go to JSON view, you kind of see how it will look here. So now we need to... Now we need to take this information and actually pass it into NAN to see how this will work. So I'll show you how we do that. So we'll come back here and I'll take this HTTP request. In fact, what I'll do is, okay, a much easier way is you want to head, head back here and hit the docs to go to the documentation of Firecall. 
Then you want to go to this thing here called extract. And then you want to scroll down to where you see an example of how to use this um, API call. You then want to copy the curl request. And then you want to come back into NAN, input, import call, curl, can't speak today, and do import. Amazing. So now what that does is it quite literally takes all of that information and it will import it how NAN kind of, or NAN wants it. Now, of course, there's a few things here we need to change. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to see that um, I need this, this. This needs to be the prompt. So I'll do prompts here. I'll come back and I'll change the prompt like so. I'll open this up. And I'll change the prompt to be this. Then I'll come back again. Where am I? And I know the URL is boohoo.com, right? So I'll come back up here and I'll say URL is just boohoo.com. Now remove all of these because I don't need those URLs. I'm only scraping boohoo.com. The last one is the schema. This is really, really important because this is the format in which Firecall will return the data that we want. So it's really, really important we don't get this bit wrong. So I'm getting some errors here. So I'll move that. Like so. You want to come back here. You want to go to where I was over here. Hit JSON view. You want to copy that. You want to come back here. You want to take it from here all the way down to here and hit paste. So now this is the new schema that we want. That was, a, that was an example one from the docs, but we want to use this schema, right? So once you've done that, you come back out of here. Amazing. So now you've got the JSON, but now we want to do our API key. So what we do for this is there's a way to save your API key once in NAN. So every time you come back, it's already saved. So how do you do that? So first of all, how do you find your API key in Firecrawl? You want to head over here to API keys. In fact, I'll do it. I'll do it here. And you want to copy your API key. I'm not going to show you guys because I don't want you guys to steal all my credits. But you want to come back here and then you don't want to go to authorization and hit um, generic credential type. Once you do that, you want to hit header auth because we're sending headers and the authorization in the headers. And as you can see, I already have mine configured, but you just hit new credential. The name would be authorization. So if I come back here, you can see here it says authorization. So you want to come back here and say authorization and the value should be bearer followed by your API key. So whatever yours is, da -da 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 -da. I'm not going to paste mine in, but you just paste in your API key and then you want to hit save. And then you basically now have your fire call, um, header authentication. So then you no longer need to put it in here and I don't need to send headers cause we're already sending headers. So just to reiterate, we. We're making a call to Firecall Extract because it does all of the heavy lifting for us. It will, it will basically scrape the website. It has proxies built in. It will then give us the structured data and give it back to us. Amazing. So if I just hit test step for now, we see what happens. What we see is we're given an ID. Because this extract, it takes, you know, maybe 10, 15, 30, sometimes a minute to run. It gives us an ID and we need to track that ID. So like every 10 seconds, you, it's called polling. You want to poll to check, hey, is this finished yet? So let me show you how we can do this in NAN. The first things first is we need to come back to the, the documentation on Firecall. And if we scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, it tells us how to use the extract. But what it also does is it also tells us how to um, check the execution of the job. And it gives us a... Um, a curl request. So what we do, we do the same thing again. So I'll copy that curl. I'll duplicate this HTTP. I will import curl, paste it in and then hit import. And then it missed this out, but it should be slash and then the extract ID. So how do we get that? You want to hook these two up together. And then the ID here, we then want to pass in here. Because whatever ID was given to us, we want to use that to constantly check, hey, is it ready? Is it ready? Is it ready? You know? So you want to do that. But now we need to check this every, let's say, 10 seconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an if statement. And what I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to take this and I'm going to bring it down here. 
and you only create an if if node. I want to run all of these again, just to kind of um get um an output, and then I'm gonna then run this as well. Authorization failed. Amazing. So let's do some live debugging. So I forgot to put in the authorization. So come back here and put general, um, header off, then my fire call off. And I'll test it again. And I'll change the name of this to um, like poll, maybe I'll call it. Oh, and I'll rename it to poll. And now it's, now it's given, it's taken some time to run. I'm not sure why. Save it. Let me refresh. Okay, so it turns out my computer is really slow, but it seems to be running now, so we'll try it again. Ah, oh, I know why. So if you guys can see here, there's like a little like um space here. I'm going to close that up and try it again, and this should work. Amazing, yeah. So that was the issue. So it said it's completed, and it couldn't find any trending products, which isn't good. But first of all, let's finish what I, where I was going. In fact, I think I know why this was. I think what, what's happened is, I think I've, I've got it. With this boohoo.com on Firecrawl, if I go back to extract. Now, if you just have it as boohoo.com, I'll go up here, it will only extract from that one URL. You need to add a, route, a wildcard where you add a slash and then a, an asterisk. And what that means is it will scrape multiple pages to find what it's looking for. So I'm going to copy that extract. I'm going to come back here, do some live debugging. And I want to try it again. So extract trending products and then trending products. Cool. And I want to try it all again. And now in the if statement, what we're saying is if status. Um, if status is equal to completed then amazing, we want to finish. However, if it's not, we want to wait. So you want to wait for maybe, I'll say 15 seconds because I know this takes quite a while. So we'll wait for 15 seconds if it's false. And after you finish waiting, I want you to check it again. So you've now, we're now going to have this like kind of like while loop. So while it's not completed, keep on checking and checking and checking and checking. So I'm going to say, check status or it's completed i'll say it's completed and i'll change this to be status check now save all of it and i'll run it all again so now we're extracting we're extracting we're extracting now we're doing a status check it, it wasn't completed so we're going to wait 15 seconds and it's going to go again and again and again until it is completed so i'm going to pause this now because it will take around two minutes and I'll unpause once we're done. Okay, so we've just hit an error, and I think I know what it is. If I come in here, and I want to do some live debugging for you guys, it says you are requesting, the resource you are requesting could not be found. And I think what's happening here is, it is trying to pull from the json.id, but because of how we have this thing, the json, how, because of how we have this sort of loop, the json.id, the first time is from the extract, but the second time is from the wait, and there's no ID from the wait. So now what we need to do is, instead of using um, json.id, we need to basically, and I might embarrass myself here, we want to use extract and then get the item. Amazing. So what we need to do now is, instead of calling json.id, json will always find the information from the most previous node. However, if we actually call the node by its name, no matter where it is in the workflow, it will always get it back from this node. I hope that makes sense. So I have to change it to extract.item.json.id instead of just json.id, which basically means that um, whether it's coming from here or from here, there'll be no issues. So I'm going to save it and refresh just for good measure and then run it again so you guys can see. So I'll do the test workflow. And then again, I'll pause it and then I'll come back when this time it should work. Okay, amazing. We're done now. So let's have a look what happened. So 13 times it constantly checked, constantly checked, constantly checked, and it hadn't finished yet. 
I'm, I'm not surprised by this because I told it to check like the whole website. So it's really going through every single product that Boohoo have to pretty much find a trending one. So it would take some time. But as you can see, you know, wasn't finished, wasn't finished, wasn't finished. Finally, it was finished. And now let's have a look. I haven't checked yet myself. Amazing. So now as you can see, trend, trending products and you've got a bunch of the names, the price, the product URLs, so many things here, which we can then use in an outreach. We can then literally take this and say, Take all, of, take all of the prices and create an average of how, how average price their products are. And we could use that in a message. Or we could take the length of this and say, hey, um, notice you have like 12, you know, really trending products, X, Y, Z. We could take the product URL of this to get the picture and then use that picture as a screenshot in a cold email. We can do so much with this. Um, it's, really, it's really insane. And like, look how simple that was. All we did was we went to Firecall. We, we said, you know, find me the trending products. Uh, now let's change it. Let's say, um, I don't know, give me another company, guys. I can't even think. At Apple.com. But we'll then do the same thing. It might, it'll take some time to run, but what you'll see is Apple.com, wildcard, trending products, product name, price description, description, and I'll copy it and then do the exact same thing again. So let your imagination run wild of what you guys can do. Now, again, all of the templates will be in the description or just let me know and I'll send it to you because these videos aren't getting many views these days. But let me know. I'll send you the description. I'll send you the template. And if you want the Escali Jewel, I'll send you this as well. But God bless and let your imagination run wild. See you soon.